Good evening, everyone. It's Jeanette Martin, brand ambassador for the Caslow Sourdough Pasta Company. And it has to be pasta time. Um, and creating from my pantry, which is over that way, and my fridge that's over that way, and the bounty of what I'm going to be putting into my crock pot tonight. So I don't know about you, but I kind of had a bit of a boring Saturday night, this past Saturday night, where I cleaned out and organized my pantry. I cleaned out and organized my freezer and my fridge, made that quick list um, that I went out Sunday and got for to restock my pantry as well as my fresh vegetables. And I discovered so many things in my freezer that I didn't know I had. So, oh, I've just got a, an electric frying pan on. I've kind of figured out something a little new. I went to my office in a safety um, to pick up a few things. So I think um, I'm going to look more and more professional as this goes on. So today we're going to make a um, has to be pasta um, um, crock pot meal that I'm going to tuck in the fridge and then I'm going to prep it all up. I'm going to show you a picture later um, on our Facebook page and I'm going to tuck it into the fridge and then tomorrow I'm going to put it on so I have it for supper tomorrow night. I don't know about you, but I've been Zooming and FaceTiming and answer emails and creating recipes. It's been a very busy day. So today I will show you my ingredients. Plus, you know what I'm really missing, guys? When I do my demos in the store, I get these little magnets and they're Luigi. And I so miss giving everybody a little Luigi. So um, there's your little Luigi. And... Once we start doing our demos in the stores again, I'm gonna ask for a lot of these because I think everybody out there needs a big helping of Luigi right now. So Luigi sends all his best. So the ingredients tonight we're gonna be using um, is the Caso Semolina Barley, a very hearty pasta, pairs really well with beef. Oh, I'm gonna turn my frying pan down. I'm, I'm learning new things. Um, I've got a little bit of chuck that was in my freezer. And this is enough for um, one tiny crock pot. I'll show you the size of my crock pot. I'm gonna trim it up a bit, but I don't wanna take away all the fat because that's where the flavor is going to come. Um, I've got 40 grams of the pasta and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna layer it in the crock pot so this doesn't get overcooked. Our vegetables tonight are a leek. Two carrots, so if you were going to do this, if you had a big crock pot, um, you might wanna do, I have a medium sized leek and I'm gonna use probably about that much. So you may wanna have two leeks. I have two carrots, medium sized carrots. You probably want about six carrots or seven carrots. Um, I had one big parsnip, but I'm only gonna use the bottom part of the parsnip. I love parsnip in a stew. It's kind of that sweet backgroundy flavor that um, just adds a layer of depth. I've got one little potato, and you're probably wondering why am I got a potato, which is starch and also my pasta. When this cooks, it's gonna add a different starch when it's cooking, and it could slightly thicken my, um, my soup stew, my pot. I've got um, half a rib of celery. Um, I've got some mango seasoning in this seasoning mix. It's a great one to have in your pantry. It's got the garlic and the ginger and the turmeric, orange peel, uh, dried cranberry and Himalayan salt. So I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing with that. I've got a tablespoon of all-purpose flour. And I've got a little secret spice. Anybody know? This is star anise. This is gonna give a kind of background mm, Thai-ish flavor to it or, or Eastern flavor to it. That's why I chose my um, my blue elephant apron. I went to culinary school over in Thailand last year. So I thought, why not? Um, I've got a little bit of the Epicure uh, beef bouillon that's gonna help make my stock as I'm going along. Some pepper a little organic olive oil that I'm gonna be cooking my beef in or browning my beef ahead of time. And I've just got some Chardonnay. I thought I had some red wine open because I'm gonna use about an ounce of that into the, into the mix as well. So thought I would show you again, let's tilt this down. You can see my board, I've got the double board action going again. Small board, wet cloth, big board, wet cloth, nothing's gonna move. Separate knife, because I'm gonna be cutting up my beef. 
And I've got a separate knife to be cutting up my vegetables. No cross contamination. It's kind of like keeping the six feet distance between each other. This is how we keep the distance between um, our beef, our raw beef and our fresh vegetables. I've washed my hands, of course, beforehand. So I'm just gonna take this, um, the beef, cut it up into probably again, the size of a dice cube. Cut this up. The reason why I wanna leave some of this, um, the connective tissue is when that melts, it puts a really big flavor um, into the crock pot. And a good crock pot, when you're making a beef, you don't wanna put the beef in just raw into the crock pot. There's no flavor that gets developed um, along the way. So I don't want that big piece of fat. So that's gonna go over there. You want a piece of chuck and chuck is a beautiful meat to go into a crock pot because the, the longer it cooks, the more tender it gets. I can remember as a kid, my mom getting big old chuck steaks um, from our big family and she would get um, quite a lot of meals. Or do you remember when, um, do you remember when short ribs were the big, um, were really, really cheap and now they're fashionable and they're really expensive now? Okay, so that's good. Gonna get rid of my knife in the sink. Give my hands a bit of a wash. And look at that, I forgot my bench cloth again. Okay. So I'm gonna take, I have a Ziploc baggie. Put the beef in the Ziploc baggie. Give my hands a little bit of a wash again. I'm going to put that tablespoon of flour in the baggie. I'm going to put a good tablespoon of the mando seasoning in there as well. Grating of pepper. Maybe quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon of pepper. We are going to use this flour mixture afterwards, and I'll show you how. Give it a shake. You want to coat everything really well. Okay. Pour a little bit of oil into my pan. And we want to start browning this to get some flavor. I'll turn this back up again. And I'll just kind of show you as I put it in. Hopefully you can see. Tell me where you're tuning in from. I'd love to know where you're And I got a couple of people watching. Any questions that you may have? Let me give this a brown on all three sides. There we go. So we've got all of them in there. This is the size of my crock pot. I have a little one for one person. So it's, I think it's a six cup crock pot. So that's just gonna be cooking and browning over there. So let's bring it up over here. See, it's getting a little easier. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this board that had the meat on it. And now we've got a fresh board. Not sure if you guys know how to clean a leek properly. What you wanna do is cut the leek down. I tend to keep this part if I'm gonna make a stock or sometimes um, I will wash it up really thinly and use it into a salad. It's got a really nice flavor, don't waste. So what you wanna do is cut it down lengthwise and leeks tend to have, cause they grow in a lot of dirt is a lot of dirt captured in the, um, in, in the different layers. So I have a little bowl of water. I'm gonna slice the leeks again, maybe about a half a centimeter. Okay, I'm going to drop them into my cold water and they're gonna sit there for a bit. And I can already feel a bit of dirt on them. So just kind of put those around. Oh, my beef is cooking a little, a little high. Let's turn that down a bit. Oh, I'm gonna open my window because I may set off my smoke alarm. Okay. 
getting a nice little brown sear. I'll just put this over here so you can see. Getting a nice little sear on my meat. That's the flavor that you want. Okay, I'm not cooking it all the way through. I'm just getting a nice little sear. And you know what? That looks good. So I'm going to turn this off. I'll plug it for now. And layer the meat first into the crock pot. That's where the majority of the heat, of course, in the crock pot is going to start at the bottom. Okay. So I'll just show you. It's layered into the bottom. Okay. Back over here. It's going to... Hello, someone's outside. Someone's outside my window. Okay, so we're done with the leak. The hard vegetable goes on the top. And again, doing a bit of a restaurant cut. I like a different texture on an angle. It's a hard vegetable. It's going to go in the bottom, on well, on, the, on top of the beef. And it goes. Okay, the celery, again, it's a hard vegetable. angled cut as well. I like doing it on an angle. You've got a lot of surface. And it goes on top of the parsnip. The carrot. I'm going to go rounds. Again, slicing about a half a centimeter. And that sits on top of the celery. And that goes. So my crock pot layering it up. My potato is next. I'm going to cut it. Oh, let's do little half moons. It's a very small little organic potato, recipe potato. So again, about the similar size. If we take a look, if I pull out a parsnip, about the similar size as the parsnip. Okay. That goes in. I've got a tomato and I love the flavor of a tomato in with beef and it'll cook down and almost get a kind of a bit like a pasta sauce in there. Skin and all. I like the skin. You can um, blanch it if you want. So again, about the same kind of uh, size as the beef cubes. That's softer. That goes on the top. This is a really sharp knife. Keeping my knuckles out of the way. Just going to give my board a bit of a bite. Okay, so if you see these leaks, I'm just kind of going to break them up in the water. I've got a colander in my sink. Let's see if there was any little grits. Yeah, a few little grits of dirt down in the bottom. I don't want that in my, my, um, my crock pot. So rinsing that off. My pan is still a little hot that I cooked the beef in. I want to give this just a little bit of flavor, these leeks. I might hear a bit of a sizzle. Turn my pan back on. And these, I just want to give them a, a little bit of a, a little bit of color to soften them up a bit. Okay. And then remember, if you watched yesterday, we made a roux. So let's go over to here. So we're going to come over to here now. As the pan heats up, they'll get going. And there's little bits of the beef flavor with the oil in here. Going to take that, uh, what I used to, to dredge the beef in, and put it in with the leeks. Cook 
hook that around. Oh, somebody out there invents Malavision. I have to tell you. So this little bit of flour and how, how I'm cooking it out and put it on top, it's going to help to thicken the sauce that's going to be um, being created as this crock pot is going tomorrow. My crock pot has two settings. It's got low, it's got high, and it's got warm. I'm going to put this on low, and I'm going to say a good eight hours. So I'll put it on tomorrow morning when I get up at like nine o'clock. Um, first of all, big key thing, um, if you're preparing your crock pot the night before and putting it in the fridge, so important, take it out of the fridge, say at eight o'clock, help it to get to room temperature, like mine can, my insert comes out. So I will put this on my counter for probably an hour before at nine o'clock I put it in here. You don't want to go really, really cold and then into your crock pot right, um, like right away. It's going to take a long time for the crock pot to, um, to warm up those really cold vegetables. Okay. So cooking that out, that flavor. Okay. That's good because there wasn't much flour in there and into my crock pot. How's everybody doing out there? Anybody have any questions? You could substitute turkey for this as your meat. You could substitute, um, oh my gosh, you could, could have put the potatoes or um, if you were going to do, say, do a tofu, you would saute up your tofu, brown your tofu, but you would want to put your tofu on the top because it's a very soft, um, you'd want to use an extra firm, but it's a very soft um a soft item, so you want to keep the soft item on the top. So I'm going to unplug that. Bring my crock pot over so you can see. We're almost full up. Okay. I want to put my pasta on the top because what's going to happen, so this doesn't go mushy, is it's going to cook almost the very last because it's at the top and it almost steams a bit. So I've done this before and it works really, really well. So it's all about layering your items in your crock pot um, the length of time that it takes to cook. Okay, so now we want to make a little bit of stock. Oh, put the secret ingredient in. The little star anise goes tucks in there. I'm telling you guys, this makes all the difference in the world. It's such a cool flavor to um, to go into this soup, um, soup stew. So I'm gonna take a tablespoon of my, my stock that I have on hand. It's very handy. A little bit of water. I'm gonna say, I think my bowl holds about two cups of water. Stir that around. And what I'm looking for is the crock pot to have liquid above the pasta. So it's not quite there. And I haven't added, of course, the secret ingredient, other than the star anise, is the two ounces of Chardonnay. That'll get cooked off. So let me add um, a little bit more water. And right now, that's kind of where I want it. I will check it in the morning. I'll check it in the morning. And, and if the pasta has started to absorb it, which it will do, because, of course, Casal sourdough pasta um, is a fresh um, made dry pasta. Um, it may start to absorb it. It won't be cooked, but it'll soften up. I will top it off to make sure that I have enough liquid covering everything in the pot before I turn it on, before in my little crock pot. So that is basically um, how I do pasta in a crock pot. You could do this recipe if you had an Instapot. The same kind of idea is you wanna layer down the meat, your harder vegetables, the softer vegetables, the pasta on top, Put your lid on, and this would probably cook in your in your Instapot in about five minutes. Um, um, I've got a big 
Instapot. Um, so I tend not to use it when, I'm, when I want just a little bit of uh, different flavors. So that is um, when I have my salt here. So tomorrow when I go to finish it up and it's ready for me to, um, to eat, I'll correct the seasoning. It might need a little bit of salt um, in there. Um, and then I will serve it up probably with some crusty bread or maybe a tortilla. I don't know. I probably not because, you know, I've got really good um, hearty vegetables and the pasta and the potatoes and the meat in here. So um, I thank you so much for coming along once again. Brand Ambassador uh, Jeanette Martin for the Caslow Sourdough Pasta Company. Being incredibly inventive with our pastas. Um, uh, this one I chose because barley and beef are just like a marriage made in heaven. Um, just to let you know, um, where I live in South Langley, I do know that Nature's Pickings has it on the shelf. Um, Palm Market, um, if you're going shopping, um, Thrifty Foods, Choices Markets, um, Nature's Fair has it. So check our website or drop us a comment if you wonder where in your neck of the woods, wherever you are in the world watching, uh, we'll make sure that we answer you. Um, and of course, you can always do it ordered online as well, right directly from Caslow, which is in the West Kootenays. So from um, my home to your home, I hope you enjoyed a little Luigi tonight from the Castle Sourdough family's home to your home. Of course, we are always wish wishing you be safe, be healthy, be at home, be with your family. We want you around for generations to come. Enjoy. And hey, if you think a family member would like this recipe, forward this video on. We certainly would appreciate it. Oh, I'm so, I get for clip every time I say that. Oh, uh, hey, morning. Oh, you must be. Uh, Nur, thank you for turning on. We're just about done. So uh, enjoy the night, everybody. Um, you know what, the reason why I did this crock pot? I was blessed today. Um, the lady who makes this um, spices, uh, Madeline, um, made me dinner and I got to drive by and take away from her house today. She made me a lovely meal. So I'm really blessed. So I've got my meal ready for tomorrow night. Hmm. What am I going to make tomorrow night? Um, you'll have to tune in and find out. Enjoy the day, everybody. All right. Enjoy the night. Bon appetito.